On the previous video, I have discussed about some concepts on set. In this video, I will discuss about the types of set. So these are the common types of set. First one is the empty or null set. So empty or null set is a set which does not contain any element. An empty or null set is denoted by the symbol phi. So symbol phi is the denotation of an empty or null set. For example, let Q be the set of whole numbers greater than 2 and less than 3. So, our set will be Q. So, what are the whole numbers that are greater than 2 and that is less than 3? So, there is none. Therefore, set Q is an empty or null set. So that is empty or null set. Next will be the singleton set. A singleton set is a set which contains only one element. For example, let D be the set of whole numbers greater than 0 and less than 2. So our set will be D. So, what are the whole numbers or what is the whole number greater than 0 and that is less than 2? So, our set now is set which contains the element 1. Since we only have one element on this set, therefore, this is a singleton set. Next... It's the finite set. A finite set is a set which contains a definite number of elements. Meaning to say that the elements inside our set will only be limited. For example, let Z be the set of whole numbers divisible by 3 from 1 to 30. So, our Z set will be Z. So, the elements now on our set Z will be the whole numbers divisible by 3. So, what are these numbers? We have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. As you can see, on our set, we only have 10 elements, which is only limited. The next one will be the infinite set, which is the reverse of the finite set. So, infinite set is a set containing a never-ending set. For example, let Y be the set of counting numbers. So, our set will be Y, which consists the elements. So, what are our counting numbers? So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Since it is impossible for us to write all the counting numbers on this set, we can only denote it by an ellipsis. Proceeding with the fifth type of set, which is equivalent set. Two sets are equivalent if they contain the same number of elements. Equivalent set is denoted by this symbol. For example, we have set D with the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We also have set H with the elements A, B, C, D, 
and E. As we have noticed, set D and set H contains the same number of elements. Set D has five elements and set H has also five elements. Since they both have the same number of elements, we can say that D is equivalent to H or H is equivalent with D because they contain the same number of elements. That is equivalent set. Next will be the equal set. Two sets are equal if they contain the same elements. It is denoted by the equal sign. For example, we have set J with the elements G, E, A, R, and we have set K with the elements R, A, G, E. As we can see, the elements on set J are also the same elements on set K. The only difference is that the ordering of the elements. If they contain the same elements or exactly the same elements, therefore, we can say that J is equal to K or K is equal to J. So that is equal set. Next will be subset. So subset is a set from the given set but not exactly the same set. In other words, a subset is only a portion of a given set. For example, we have set O with the elements W, H, I, T, and E. Therefore, we can say that the set with the element W is a subset of O. By the way, a subset can be denoted by this symbol. So that is a subset. So set with the element W is a subset of O because W is a portion of the given set O. Also, we can say that set with the elements W, T is also a subset of O. Also, we can say that set with the elements T, H, E is also a subset of O and so forth. So as long as the elements on that set belongs or a portion of the given set but not exactly the same set, that is a subset. And the last type of our set will be the universal set. A universal set is a set which contains all the elements of other given sets. For example, let us get the universal set for set A with the elements F, O, U, R, and set B with the elements F, I, V, E, and set C with the elements S, I, X. So universal set can be named or can be denoted by the capital letter U. So the universal set now is the set with the elements F, O, U, R, then we also have I, V, E, then we also have S, X. As we can see on our universal set, 
the repeated number or the repeated letters are already considered as one to remain its distinction. Because on our previous discussion on the basic properties of set, if one or many elements of a set are repeated, the set remains the same. So those are the eight types of set.